Hello, and welcome to Life More Abundantly podcast, where you will not only learn how to navigate life, but to experience it more abundantly. Your host for this podcast is Pastor Sheena, founder of Abundant Life Holistic Wellness, and she is passionate about helping others to achieve inner wholeness and wellness. Pastor Sheena is a highly skilled mental health therapist, life and performance coach, personal development and spirituality specialist, training facilitator, and speaker qualified to help create a better you. On this podcast, Pastor Sheena will offer all things related to professional development and spirituality from a Christian and psychological perspective. Life More Abundantly podcast content will consistently feature interesting topics that will cultivate holistic development in every area of wellness pertaining to the individual self. So buckle up, tune in weekly, and subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Life More Abundantly podcast talk show. I am your host, Pastor Sheena Thomas. I um, we I am still excited about today. Still excited that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall be glad and rejoice in it. This, in spite of being sick on this week and sick on today, um, we did get started uh, late today, but I still just want to go on and be committed. Um, we thank you all for tuning in. We thank those who will who will tune in and join us later. We ask that you would like as well as share this broadcast on today. I am excited about our topic. We are going to continue in the topic of transformation. And unfortunately, uh, we were going to have um, Azar- Azario Carruthers continue his uh, testimony about transformation because he got disconnected on last week, but for for whatever reason, he is not able to be with us on today. However, you know, I am totally capable to, you know, be led of the Lord and talk about today. And God gave me the art of transformation. So we heard about what a, a, a transformation testimony. And, and I believe that all of us, we have a, a testimony regarding transformation. I know I have several. And in years to come in my life, I will have even more where I'll be able to talk about something that God has just transformed in my life, in my mind, my heart, my family, um, business. You know, that's and that's the beauty of life. You are supposed to um, evolve and, and grow and change. And if we're not doing that, then something's wrong and we need to. Um, e- evaluate that, you know, it it, sh- it will be always something in our life that we are working on, that we are striving to change or to, to see better or to believe God that he would make it better. And that to me is the essence of the art of, of transformation for me. Amen. So um, as we said, our guest is not going to be here, but we will talk about the art of transformation. And we have um, four steps of claiming and laying hold to your transformation and being and being able to to walk in the power of restoration. I believe that restoration is our portion. I believe transformation is our portion, but I also um, believe and I see in my work a lot how guilt and shame keeps us from laying hold to that portion. A lot of times, uh, many of us, all of us, I'll say, because the Bible says for all have sinned. It doesn't say for many have sinned. doesn't say some, a few. It says for all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. All of us have done things. All of us have said things. All of us have been a particular way during certain times and seasons of our life that we can look back on and not be proud of. 
Even some of us now, we struggle with some things that causes us not to be proud of the person that we are. Even if we don't tell or admit this to anyone else, we know how we think and, and see and view ourselves on the inside. That's one of the things we talk about. We use this word condemnation, which the word um, condemnation, it comes from the word condemn, to put down, to tear down, to always remind you of what you did and where you came from, you know, and and we 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 think about that word. That word brings the it's designed to bring to us guilt and shame, designed to make us feel guilty and ashamed of who we are, ashamed of something that we did. Not to say that we should not be remorseful, but just be, but guilt and shame is not a part of, of remorse. You know, it's, it's not. A, it is actually the opposite of it because, you know, we, it causes us even to feel unworthy. If we talk, if we talk about remorse, remorse, I love to think of as um, we're not just we're sorry about you know what we did. We're we're apologetic for because I don't like the word sorry, y'all. We're apologetic for the impact of what we did, who it affected, who it impacted, and and because of that, we're able to um, take accountability. We're able to humble ourselves to acknowledge that we feel bad. We feel you know some sometimes terrible about something that we've done. Remorse, and we utilize remorse to go to. God for repentance, but that guilt and shame will keep us in a place where we don't even feel worthy to ask for God's forgiveness, or we don't even feel worthy to ask for other people's forgiveness. Sometimes, you know, and I've seen this in my life, and I know some of you are probably not going to agree, but maybe some of you have seen this in there in your life where. We say, oh, my God, he did such and such. She did such and such. They don't even have the audacity to come back and say, I'm sorry. Sometimes people feel so ashamed of what they did that they just believe sorry is not going to cover it or I apologize or giving you the reason for why they, they, they just feel so ashamed and they just stay in that place of shame and guilt. That is a bad place to be because that place brings on depression for sure all day long. It also has you in a place of anxiety, um, fear plus worry, anxiety, you know, and that is just not a place to be. Everybody has done unspeakable things. Everybody has done things, you know, even at, you, I, I, I do believe that there are some things we totally just need to take to the grave, you know, and I think that every one of us have something like that where, and, and you know, my thing it may be unspeakable to me and you might say, oh, that's it. And I might say the same to you because it's about how the person themselves sees what they have done. And that's all, and that's, you know, kind of all that matters, you know? So I want to talk about the art of transformation because being in a place of guilt and shame and allowing guilt and shame to keep us from being restored out of the place where we did that thing or said that thing or behaved that way. All it's going to do is keep us in that place, but it's going to also allow us to continue in that <clears throat> excuse me, in that realm of behavior is not going to help us or make us get better. It's only going to keep us in a place where we continue to do things along the lines of the very thing that we feel so shameful and guilty about. So the art of transformation, these are the things that that I believe can bring us um, to a place where we can experience transformation. And I know that it was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit. And number one, number one and only is God. Number one and only is God. Think about it, y'all. God created us. He created us. I love um, Psalms. Um, Oh my God, why I can't think of it now. I don't even know. 113 or 114, how it talks about, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. Is bother me how it talks about you know how God knows our innermost parts and of course He does. He created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. I love I love that. So who better 
to lead us to a, a, a area to lead us amen to a a state from brokenness a state from feeling um guilty and and um can always convicted about things then god the one who created and the one who made us he 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 laid the blueprint out for when we mess up you know that's why you know he sent jesus to be the sacrificial lamb and we're coming up on holy week amen because he knows that we are not a perfect people he knows that we we will mess up now it does not excuse when we mess up it does not give us a license to sin and to mess up but when we find ourselves in a state where we have amen he has given he has made a way of escape that's what the bible talks about him him making a way of escape for us and so what better way and what better person to turn to than god himself amen and actually the um psalms i was referring to was 139 is 139 13 through 15 is my favorite that's where i was getting the 13 and the 14s from is 139 where it talks about god knows our innermost parts and things like that and um and so what are our steps to transformation? As I said, number one is God. And, un and, and, and as we submit, because that's what it takes to God to be the one to transform our thinking, transform our behavior, transform the way we speak. Because think about it, whatever you think, whatever the things are that you have been through in your life that you needed transformation or even the thing that you're in right now where you need transformation it's not only the the thing the the thing that you do like say for instance is a certain behavior it's not just that behavior you have some thoughts that 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 drive that behavior you have a you have a, a certain um belief about this thing you have some you know some some um some thoughts, a mindset that that determine your thoughts, determine your feelings and your mood that drives this behavior about that thing. So all of that needs to be transformed, not just the thing, but the, the things that are driving the thing needs to be transformed as well. Because if not, it'll just be like a Band-Aid fix and you'll find yourself right back in the same state all over again. So we, we know God is the one who gives us, he has the power to totally transform us. And then on our part, it takes us to you know, be vulnerable enough to be, to, to go through the state of brokenness, to go through um, the period of the, to have a mind and an attitude of submission. Number three, to be able to, to sacrifice some things. And lastly, number four is gratitude. And I want to talk about these four things today. So as we open up with our our scripture is Romans 12, 1 and 2, which I said that was the theme for this topic of transformation. And it says, I'm reading from the King James. I do have some other translations here. I think I don't. I don't. Sorry, y'all. King James, though. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I love that word conformed. Con it's a lot of key words that stick out in Romans 12, 1 and 2. So, um, um, the first one that sticks out to me is living sacrifice. The next one is conformed. Another one is acceptable, holy. These are some key words. And I like conform because we choose what we will conform to and what we, what we don't want to conform to. And if you think about it, the things that you conform to, conform means that you become like something. 
you become like someone. Some of us, you know, I'm. this is how my family did it. This is how my family act. This is how I'm going to do it. You know, I grew I grew up around X, Y and Z. This is how this is all I know. You, we say things like this. This is um, us acknowledging the things that we conform to. And we're also acknowledging why we conform to this, these things. I believe, though, that any of us who who say that we believe God, we love God and we serve God, then we have a duty and a responsibility and a call to, re- to conform to the ways of God. Amen. And so those in the ways of God is found in his word. That's number one. We want change, but sometimes we don't want to do the things that are necessary to get the change. No, we, we can't have it our way. This is not Burger King in our life. You know, I wish it was, but we can't have it our way. We have to do some things in order to get some things. That's just like, just let's take the concept of money and the concept of um, success, right? We all know that in order for us to, to have, to build wealth or to build income, we have to work. It's something that we got to do to get it. Even down to the thief, no. I can't just stay home and wait for the money to come. I got to go to the bank and rob it. Don't do that, y'all. But I'm just saying, you can't have something and just think it's going to come to you. Everybody knows, oh, what I got to do something in order to get this thing. That's how concepts like transformation are. That concepts like deliverance, concepts like things of, of healing and anything that results in or produces change. You got to do something in order to get it. It's not just going to fall into your lap. So we know God is the one that's bring, that's given us the power to be transformed. And so let's deal with the first one of, of brokenness, which when I think about the word brokenness, I always think about um, King David. And I think about his situation in Psalms 51, which that's not the, this is not the only situation he's had along these lines, but this is one of the most famous ones when he sinned and and slept with another man's wife. And not only did he do that, he had her husband killed because he gotten her pregnant and he also just wanted to have her for himself. So he he did a sin on top of a sin on top of a sin. And that's how some of us are in where we stand in need of transformation, because it wasn't just the one thing. It wasn't just the one time, but no, we kept doing it. We told ourselves we wasn't going to do it. And we just kept doing it. We kept saying it, you know, we kept desiring it, you know, whatever that thing is. And so in Psalms 51 and 10, David said, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And this is the, the, um, the the new living translation i believe i'm going to just read it the way it reads it says create in me a clean heart oh god renew a loyal spirit within me verse 11 it says do not banish me from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me in verse 12 he says restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey it's a lot of things there that I just love. Um, so here it is. David was a king. Um, and he was a popular king. He was a successful king, by the way. And he was willing to humble himself. And first of all, realize that only God can restore him. Only God can um, truly judge him. And even though the people, he 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 had to worry uh, to some extent about the judgment of the people, but he knew that God was his ultimate judge. He had that ability to submit. You know, that's what I love about David, even though he was a person, a person, a man, a person in great authority. Some of us sometimes we don't we don't um, acknowledge, you know, times that we are broken. You know, and so and when and and then when we are broken, we hate it. We hate it so much that sometimes we allow it to drive us to bitterness versus repentance. And I just want to say, if that's you, you don't have to go in the route of bitterness. 
because bitterness is its own thing and it takes on a whole nother form and it causes a whole nother level of issues and problems in your life. And it not only, and the thing about bitterness, it does not only impact you, it impacts everybody around you. It impacts everything that you do. And it also puts our heart in a state, a calloused heart is what I call it, where it's so hard that is even sometimes we we even know how to keep, we keep God out when we have this calloused heart. You know, we don't want to let anyone in yet. And still, we want love. We want acceptance. We want, you know, a, a prestige. We want all of these things, but we don't know how to let other people in because of the bitter heart, because of the callous heart that came from the broken place. So I want to say to you, when you find yourself in a place where you're broken, brokenness is, is like this, if I could describe it. It's the place where you feel defeated. It's the place where you feel hopeless. It's the place where you feel sometimes even despondent. You know, even though, and I, and I say this all the time, feelings are not facts. And also just because we know feelings drive our mood, right? Your, your feelings, they determine your mood. The, the temperature of your mood is what I like to call it. That is not even factual. Because sometimes I have a, I can have an attitude and be mad at the world and there's no reason, no, just no, no reason, no um, situation or circumstance I can give. But because of those bad thoughts, it uh, put me in a mood to feel that way. You ever heard somebody say, oh, why are you so happy today? You say, oh, no reason. Those thoughts, it led to that mood for you to be happy. No situation, no cause. See, it is is both good and bad. But you know, um, brokenness. When we're in a state of brokenness, and and we're feeling these feelings of defeat, feeling these these feelings of you know, no matter how hard I try, I just can't overcome this thing. I just can't stop doing this thing. Sometimes, some of us, we have stumbling blocks in our life and things that we do and say that we're not proud of that we try to stop and when we can't do it in and of ourselves, we get angry we get frustrated it leads us to that bitter and broken place in that that's the best place and the best time to surrender and submit to God that's I believe that was the state of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane I believe that he and his human side had come to a realization in a moment that, oh my goodness, the magnitude, the weight of the reason that he was born and placed on his on this earth, it, it hit him in a moment, in a moment, shifted his mood, he was broken, he cried out to the father, but instead of him saying, you know what, I'm not going to do this, oh no. He said, not my will, but thine will be done. You have a choice in the broken place. What will you choose? Because what you choose determines your ability to be transformed and to overcome and to experience the power of restoration. It's all about what you choose and what you decide in your place of brokenness. And I want to say to you too, having you, we, you tried so many things in this place, right? Some people turn to drugs in the broken place. Some people call up a friend event in the broken place. Some people turn to alcohol. Some people turn to sex. Some people turn to money and shopping and buying expensive things in the broken place. Haven't we tried everything right in the broken place? How about we try God? Let's do something you've never done before and watch and see what happens. And it also causes, it also um, will, will cause you to have to make it up in your mind that you're willing to be vulnerable. Now, don't get scared because this vulnerable, this kind of vulnerability is the kind nobody, nobody's seeing you. This is, we're talking about private time here. We're talking about private time here. Nobody necessarily has to see you go through these, these, these vulnerable moment, moments. This is, these are you and God moments. 
These are you and you moments. A vulnerability it takes to acknowledge that you're broken, like, like Jesus. He could have kept it to himself and allow his heart to get hardened and started talking to the disciples any old kind of way. But he chose to fall on his knees and to cry out. He didn't choose to act like it wasn't something wasn't bothering him. He didn't choose to act like he didn't have an issue with, you know, um, the reason he was put on this earth. And, and I'm not saying that he had an issue. I'm, I'm just thinking that he realized the weight of it and he had a hold up. Wait a minute moment. But in that moment, he chose well. He chose well. That's where we go wrong. We don't choose well. We don't choose wisely. And we say, well, choose well for who? Choose wise for who? For us. For you first. And then for everyone that you're com connected to. Everyone that you have the ability to influence and impact. So brokenness. We can either repent or become bitter. And God knows I pray that you choose uh, to re the repent portion where we acknowledge and we humble ourselves before God that he is able to exalt us in due time from out of the broken place. And then next I want to talk about submission. And we read um, the, the, the scripture of ta that talks about presenting or that also means to submit ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. Holy and acceptable, submit, you know, not my, that's what Jesus did when he said, not my will, but thine will be done. He was submitting. He was surrendering his will to God's will. You know, he was acknowledging God. This flesh wants to say, forget this. You know, I'm not doing this. This is for the birds. But his spirit was he gave and surrendered his will to God. And that's why the word of God tells us, too, that the that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Any of us ever been in situations where we wanted to do one thing, but we know that what we know we should do the other thing. That's what that's what that is, the war against the flesh and the spirit, you know, so being willing to submit, having an openness to submit sometimes and submission. Remember, isn't it doesn't make us weak. Submission actually takes strength. It takes strength to 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 do it and it takes strength to remain in a state where you are submitted and yielded to something other than yourself, something other than even. Um, a person, place, or thing that you usually submit to. You know, it takes a strength to submit to God, to want to get to know God, to want to understand who he is, and, and to develop a relationship with him for yourself. And next, I want to talk about, about sacrifice. And you does in Romans 12 and in one set talk about presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice because we we are alive. We're not we're not a dead thing that's being sacrificed. We are alive. And and I believe that the people of God, the enemy, Satan, the devil, our adversary is out 24 seven to get us to to kill, to destroy, to fight against us, place obstacles in our way, roadblocks in our path. And that's why the Bible tells us in Romans eight. I'm going to read um, 35 and 37 and through 37 and hearing. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This is Paul talking. And he says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. 36, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. This is the living sacrifice part. Though we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay or no, Paul is saying, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, through Jesus Christ who loves us. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's why the uh, Bible tells us in John 10 and 10, for the thief cometh not but for to still kill and destroy. 
You know, this is what we are up against all the days of our, of all, every day, every moment, every hour of our life. But we got to know and believe that we got victory through Jesus. We got to know and believe that we have the power and the ability to speak the word and the enemy has to flee. That's why we got to know the word. That's why, what do we do when we know that it's bad? Like, I, you know, I live in Philly and a lot of you watching, y'all, you know, you, everybody has a hood. Everyone has a ghetto. I don't care where you, what state you live in, what country you live in, everyone has a hood. And, and you know, you can't go certain parts without protecting yourself. You know, some of us carry pepper spray. Some of us carry um, what they call it, maids, pocket knives. And I'm just going to stop there because I know that's not all people are carrying. But we protect ourselves. We arm ourselves at the threat of danger, right? We got to do that spiritually as well. How can we arm ourselves at the threat of spiritual danger being prayed up? A life without prayer? is a life is a life without power the bible tells us that the the bible the word of god it is the word the inspired word of god that is life it's living the living word of god it has power when when the devil came to uh tempt jesus and to 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 um mess with jesus when he was in the garden and when he was um times when he was praying and fasting he gave him the word and he had to flee this is what we have. This is Jesus was just showing us. This is, oh, this is what you do, Sheena. This is what you do, Tracy. This is what you do, John. When Satan comes, this is what you do. How will we know these things if we're not reading? If we're not knowing what the Bible tells us for ourselves? This is how we fight the enemy off. Amen. So, we got to know this is us presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice because it's happening anyway. Life happens to us anyway. Challenges happen to us. You know, we, we all go through bad things. Bad things happen. Bad things come. So I'm, I want to experience these things as I, you know, I'm not, I don't win at everything. You don't win at everything, just like you don't lose at everything. But whatever challenge I have to endure, I want to do it in the will of God. I want to do it utilizing the power and the tools that God has given me, prayer, fasting, his word, hearing from him, being submitted to him. This is what and how we have to do these things. So be a living sacrifice. I'm I'm going, we, we're, we are living sacrifice, but we got power, y'all. And we have to exercise and utilize the authority of this power in order to see the um the victory in the things that we do and that we say. This is how we ch achieve the art of transformation because you know everyone has been in a place where you've done some things, you've said some things, you used to be awake, and you got that person or them that group of people that's telling you this is what you're gonna always be like. You'll you'll never um stop doing this. You're gonna be just like so and so, and um once a liar always a liar once a prostitute you know they say all kinds of things but God and God also what I love about God and the art of transformation is that he has the ability to not only transform our mind and our um, behaviors and even the way that we talk but God will have it uh, um, I call it an anointing I know it's an anointing because we will not even look like what we've been through. There will be no residue of what we used to do, what we used to say, where we used to go and hang out. He will totally clean us up. That's the art of transformation. Not only do I want, not want to do the thing, I don't even want to look like that's what I do. You ever met somebody that they, you could just tell they used to be an alcoholic or you could just tell they used to be a drug addict. You know, that that's, that means, yes, they don't do that thing anymore, but the residue is still there. But God has the power and the ability that when you tell somebody, oh, I used to be on drugs, I used to be strung out on drugs, they'd be like, what, you? Yes, because God has the power to remove the residue. There will be no trace of what you used to do, who you used to be. That is the art of transformation. And that's why at the question, 
how can we be truly transformed is one answer, God and God alone. Amen. So let's just go back over the, the things that we listed under God. It, the first one, we talked about brokenness. We talked about submission and we just wrapped up talking about sacrifice. Lastly, let's talk about gratitude. Because when we do come to a place that where we are totally transformed in something, how are we going to act? Because now the question comes, how can I maintain this new level of victory, this success? Transformation is success, y'all. That's why I always um, be careful when I use the word success, because I know that what it means for, for me, it might not mean for you and vice versa. I count transformation as an aspect of success because it's not easy. And, and I believe, too, um, few are transformed from, if you name your thing, it could be drugs, it could be prostitution, it could be crime. It's more people who don't make it out of those lifestyles than the ones that do. So that is why I look at it as an aspect of success. So now when we reach a point of transformation where, and that's another thing I love about God, not only will he bring you out, but he'll give you the desire to stay out where you won't even desire to go back. You know how sometimes, sometimes we just stay out of things and stay just like me and my relationship with food, right? Especially sweets. You know, I don't have a desire yet. I'm believing God for my desire where I don't, you know, want it. But right now, I stay away from it totally and solely because I know I should not have it. Like, I, I don't, and not even totally, I just limit myself. You know, I don't do it, have sweets as much as I want, totally because I know I shouldn't, you know. So it's a difference between not wanting something because you know you shouldn't versus just not wanting it at all. And transformation, true transformation is when you can get to a point where you don't desire a thing at all. And that's the power of God right there. Amen. And so gratitude, First Thessalonians 5 and 8 reads, in everything. And I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks. You know, sometimes even in my bad states, I give God thanks. Or when things don't work out in my favor, I give God thanks. And I say because, and I always think about how, yes, it didn't work out. I always think about how it could have been worse, how I could have said it didn't work out and it could, but this could have happened, but that could have happened. You know, I say, Lord, I thank you that it wasn't that bad or it wasn't this bad, you know? So it, I think that we can all always find a reason to give God thanks. It's our thanks, it's our praise, it's our worship. That keeps our mentality in a certain state to be able to receive the art of transformation, to be able to know how to maintain is one thing to get there is another thing to stay there. And it's going to take us to have a certain level of understanding why we need to be transformed from something. Also, understanding about the greater things that God has in store for us. That's, I would say, that's probably the most, the, the, the number one thing that drives me to stay away from some things, to stay away from people, to stay away from, you know, um, things I used to like, I used to be interested in because I see what God has for me, what he has for my life is much bigger and much greater than that. It's even much bigger and much greater than me. So that's my motivator. Gratitude is when you can find that motivator, that thing that you can be thankful for. You can be grateful no matter if it, things are going well or if they're not. And I believe that there's always something that we can be grateful for. And when we can maintain, see, the world talks about gratitude a lot. Amen. But I believe us as the believers, we have to get the understanding of gratitude from the mind and the perspective of 
God. Gratitude. Gratitude keeps us in a state of praise. It keeps us in a state where we're able to adore God, where we're able to go into worship. And we know things happen in worship. Chains are broken. You know, that's where that's where the true transformation is taking place. We're able to enter into the presence of God and ask whatever it is that we need to, whatever we will. Amen. Once we enter into the presence of God, just thanking him no matter what. And that is what is necessary in order to keep us in a transformed state, in order to allow us not to go back. Amen. By uh, us not only thanking God, God, I thank you for bringing me out. I thank you for delivering me. I thank you. I don't even desire that thing no more. But thanking him even for other things, you know, he could have allowed us to die in that place. He could have allowed, you know, what happened to others to happen to us, but he didn't. Thanking him that we have come to this mindset, this transformed mindset that it takes to acknowledge it was him that brought us out and to acknowledge it's going to take him to keep us out. We can't rely on God to bring us out of something. And then when he brings us out, we go back to our own sinful and fleshly desires. We, we, we come to a place or a point where we feel like, oh, I don't need them no more. We can't do that because what will happen is you'll find yourself in a worse state. Amen. And God, and, 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 and who knows if God will deliver you or not. And we know that he is he is forever um, gracious and merciful and he he will love us forever and ever. There's no end to his love. But God also never will allow us to take his grace for granted. Amen. So gratitude, having gratitude, even if things are not the way that you for, that you saw it going. Just to be able to say, God, I thank you, because another thing that I've realized is that a lot of times when things didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to, I dare not get mad at God, you know, because I, I'd rather take the mindset and the approach, that, oh, God, you must got something better in store for me. God, you know, you must know that that thing that I wanted, it wouldn't have been the best thing like I thought. You know, his sight range is way further than ours. That's why the word says, he, Jesus it said, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. And if he's the beginning and the end, that means he's he, he's, he knows about all the in between. We don't have that ability. And, and, and a lot of times, every time I, I, I feel the need to talk about being mad at God, I'm going to keep saying what I say. And it's true. When we find ourselves as people getting mad at God, or I'm upset with God, or me and God not seeing eye to eye, I want to say some of the things that I've heard said to me, you know, me and God not on speaking terms. That's what they say. I'm like, woo, I'd be scared to think those things. It shows you, you think you, you sound cool. You think you sound, um, you know, accepted. No, it shows your lack of understanding of God. If you knew who he was, I heard a, a song. I don't know the name of the song, but I just, the lyric caught my ear and it said, God, if you never do another thing for me, I'll still praise you. That's the attitude I want to take. So for all of those who say, oh, I'm mad at God, he don't care, by the way. He he does not care. That's just like when you get mad at people. They don't care. And even if they care in the beginning, it wears off. How about we get an understanding of God? Because, so, see, that's how I am. I'm very intellectual. I'm very analytical. And I'd rather understand why God said no. Or why he didn't give me something. And then, oh my God, God, you know, I'm mad at God. He get on my nerves and I knew I shouldn't have served him. And, and all of this stuff that people say. No, I'd rather understand. I'd rather say, Lord, I accept your will. God reveal to me why it didn't go this way. One of the things, and, 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 and a lot of times nowadays, I don't even do that. I don't have a need or desire to do that. But there was a time when I did. And, and God would. Even if it wasn't right away, down the line, I would see why he closed the door or why he didn't allow something to happen or why he did allow it. And remember, y'all, he don't cause it. He may or may not allow it. 
So we have to make be in a place of gratitude for our transformation in order to maintain the transformation. And so that concludes today's um, episode of The Art of Transformation. We hope you got something out of it today. We're going to say in your hearing again, the steps to the art of transformation is brokenness, submission, sacrifice, and gratitude. I also want to say scriptures. We didn't even read all the scriptures, but I'll call them all out. It's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 8, 35 through 37, as well as 38 and 39. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Psalms 51, I'm going to say 8 through 12. And lastly, we read 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. I also had, I was planning on, but I didn't, I was going to read the the story of the sinful woman. You know, the one that we say was Mary, and she probably was one of the Marys, but it's John, let me see, it's John um, verse 1, and we're talking about the gospel, John 1 through 11. I love that story because... We say today prostitution is highly desensitized in our culture. We we got another name for y'all. We call it sex workers. But if anyone has ever been in that or you know someone who has, there is a shame like no other that comes with it and a self-condemnation like no other that comes with it. And even in that such situation, God was able to transform her life and her thinking about herself as well as the way other people saw her. That's what I like about that story, because sometimes we don't get to experience restoration because we're stuck at the place of what people think of us. They tell us it so much we believe it and it becomes our narrative of ourself. So when you get a chance, read that story. And you may not, it may, your thing may not be prostitution, but whatever it is, if it's um, any type of drug addiction, sex addiction, addiction to porno- pornography, gambling, you know, um, and racing. This is one people don't talk about, but there are lots of people in um, several communities, and I definitely know Philadelphia is one of them, that addicted to racing. And that's the whole animal and beast of itself because you got to get the car. And if it's not your car, you got to get the money up for a car. You're gambling. You're betting on the race. You got to find a, a place that's somewhat secretive. That's a whole That's a whole community. But whatever your stronghold, your struggle is, and it, the way that it makes, us, it makes you feel, you know, there is hope and there is an answer for that. And God doesn't, it, you don't have to stay in that state. So the art of transformation, I hope you guys got something out of today's episode. And this wraps up our, um, our episodes on transformation. So join us next week for Life More Abundantly podcast talk show. We're going to pray And then we're going to end. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's broadcast. We thank you, oh God, for the way that you have led, the way that you have instructed. God, we pray that you would bless every listener, every watcher, oh God, today as well as moving forward, oh God, that they, God, would experience, oh God, your power of transformation, that they would experience, oh God, every yoke being broken and destroyed by by your power, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray, oh God, that you would give them, oh God, strength, oh God, that you would give them, oh God, encouragement, hallelujah, to see themselves healed, to see themselves transformed, to see themselves delivered in the name of Jesus. We know, God, that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think, and we pray, God, that you would allow deliverance, God, to take place, oh God, for those, oh God, who will 
Listen to those who will hear in the name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God. We just thank you. We praise you and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen, everyone. God bless. And we will definitely see you back here next week on Life More Abundantly. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching or listening to this week's broadcast. Join us next week as we take you further along the journey of healing, wholeness, and wellness. To learn more about the services of Abundant Life Holistic Wellness, or to book or engage with Pastor Sheena one-on-one, or make further comments or inquiries, please visit our website at RestoreAbundantLife.com. To stay connected with us, please follow the links to our social media outlets below. Again, thank you for watching, and we hope you join us next week.